Tim's bike has uh, broke down last night. Uh, the uh, generator's not charging, and uh, so we're going to have a look at it today. And uh, if we just look at the dashboard on the bike, the first thing we notice is that when we turn the ignition on, only the oil warning light comes on and the uh, neutral light, the generator warning light, which is just here, is not glowing, which it should be. So we suspect that uh, there's a fault in the charging system to do with the rotor. Uh, so that's what we're going to investigate. Uh, could be the brushes, could be the rotor, could be the generator warning light bulb. So we'll test each of those out in turn. So I've just uh, disconnected the battery earth strap at the uh, gearbox end. So there's the alternator exposed and uh, so these are the cables that comes down to the brushes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're first going to test the operation of the lamp and to do that what we're going to need to do is to remove these two cables here and uh, and then carry out a test uh, to see if the lamps are working. What I've done is I've temporar temporarily reconnected the battery earth lead so that we've got the battery back in circuit and I've switched the ignition on so if you look at the uh, um, the dashboard you can see now that the uh, the lights are as they were when we examined them earlier and if I pull these two leads off here okay, and separate them now what I'm going to do is I'm going to earth I'm going to put this uh, cable here which is the black and blue or the blue cable with a black tracer I'm just going to connect that through this crocodile clip and earth it out by touching it on the body of the alternator. When I make that connection, the light comes on. So we've established that it's nothing wrong with the generator warning light bulb. Okay, so this now narrows the problem down to either the alternator brushes or the alternator rotor going open circuit. Right, I'm just uh, doing a visual inspection of the um, the uh, generator brushes here. The generator brushes are housed one behind the other. You can just see the front edge of one there and there's another one directly behind. And uh, these terminal connections here, uh, or this one in particular, connects to the front brush and then passes, the current passes from that cable coming from the light through that front brush goes onto a slip ring here and then passes through the windings of the rotor behind and comes out of the other slip ring here and passes up the brush behind and then out of this terminal that's connected up here. So uh, what I'm going to propose to do now is to reconnect the cables. Well first thing I'll do is I'll reconnect the front cable and put that on there. We've reconnected the supply cable. I'm now going to connect an earth strap up to that terminal there and I'm just going to earth it out on the cylinder of the engine and look to see if the light comes on on the dash, which it doesn't. So that's eliminated a fault, any fault that might have occurred in that cable there. So now we've narrowed the issue down to either the brushes or the rotor and uh, one thing I'm going to do whilst that's still switched on is I'm just going to reconnect and uh, I'm just going to press down on the brush. The brushes look reasonably healthy so that leads me to suspect the rotor. We're now going to remove fuel stator assembly so uh, first thing we're going to do is disconnect all the wires so 
There we go, we're just pulling off the three phase wires there. These are the brush cables which we've already had up once. Right, and this is the uh, um, cable that goes to the rectifier. So disconnect those uh, five cables, six cables, and then we can undo the alternator spacer. Okay, so we're just removing the alternator. You've got to pry this off carefully because you don't want to damage, touch the coil windings underneath, you can damage them easily. So once you've just pried it apart, there you go. So if you look here, those are the brushes, and they look to be okay, so I don't think there's anything wrong with them, there's still plenty of, uh, plenty of life left in them. Uh, but they could be replaced, they have to be unsoldered off these plates and new ones soldered on. Uh, but they look to be fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think what we're going to find is the fault is in the rotor. And to test the rotor, you need a multimeter. You need to set it to ohms. So it's 0 to 200 ohms. If we test the ohm meter. We're going to measure the resistance of the meter. Uh, that one there means that it's open circuit at the moment but if I touch the two probes together you can see that we get a, resi a resistance of almost zero which is what we should expect with a whole healthy meter. So now <coughs> if I take the meter and put one probe on one ring and one probe on the other ring, you can see that the meter doesn't move. Now we should get a reading. We should get a resistance reading. That that one shown there means that it's open circuit. What we should get is some kind of a figure there. The rotor's held on by a long bolt, as you'll see it comes out from the crankshaft, it's got to pass by two threads. So that's the circuit nut. Now the rotor is actually secured on a taper, so you've got to break that taper. And to do that, I've got this special tool which you can buy, you can either make up or you can buy quite cheaply from uh, someone like Motor Bins or Motor Works or some other part supplier. And what happens is, is you screw that into the end of the rotor, the first thread, and then it bears on the end of the crankshaft. And then you do it up tight. When you do it up tight, it should pop the end of the rotor off. Or pop the whole rotor off. Like that. The test we did with the two probes on the uh, slip rings with the uh, ohm meter, we put a probe there and a probe there and measured the resistance. Now what's going on is that in, on this rotor here you can see that we've got a copper winding. That is a continuous length of wire. One end of the wire is connected to one slip ring and the other end of the wire is connected to the other slip ring. And when I measured the resistance of the wire and found that it was open circuit, what it demonstrated to me was that the um, wire had broken somewhere in the circuit. And so that's why we're having to replace it, because there's no longer a, a continuous length of wire going between this slip ring and that slip ring, which is what is desirable. Again, measure the resistance between the slip rings. Our rotor is reading 3.3, 3.2, 3 
Now that to me is acceptable because we're measuring this on a cold day. It's almost down at zero degrees Celsius at the moment, probably about two or three degrees Celsius. So uh, a low, a low um, temperature will give a, a lower resistant, resistance, which is what I expect. So I think this is within spec, this spare rotor that I've picked up. Um, and I'm quite happy with that. So the brushes have to be carefully manipulated over the top of the rotor. So it requires a little bit of careful jiggery pokery. One, two, and then we just got to align up the bolt holes. Remember when you're doing these bolts up to tighten them down evenly. In my manual there are no um, torque wrench settings for these bolts so I just do them up carefully. Remember they're only small bolts, they don't need to be done up with Herculean effort. cables in the same order they came out. Well, I'm just going to reattach the earth lead temporarily. I need to switch on the ignition now Tim, see if the red light comes on. And it does. So, neutral light's off because we've got it in gear, but you notice that the generator warning light is now on. So that appears to have uh, cured that little problem. So you can see we're about to start it now. Bolt reefer operation. Good. What you've got to be careful of with these, when you're taking these covers off, is if you don't have the battery disconnected, which you should have, you can burn out the um, the uh, rectifier by touching the uh, touching this cover and earthing it out. So um, always disconnect your 